Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, assholeconsulting.com, and yes, I am aware of the glare on the glasses, but we're just, we're just gonna have to suffer until I come up with a solution. <clears throat> anyway, go to assholeconsulting.com if you want me to help you out with whatever it is you need help with, as long as you pay. We have a, a twofer, uh, a young man writes, hey Aaron, first off, this will be a long one, but hey, it's a billable, oh, it's all billable. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Big fan here, I'm 32. I'm Irish and my life is an absolute peak, a peach. I make $140,000 per year as a consultant. Uh, I don't want to give too much away from you in a foreign country. I'm married to a wonderful woman who, cute accountant that she is, does our annual budget in her lingerie, is sensitive, kind, dutiful, and affectionate. You're winning! She herself earns $50,000 per year. We have a very happy marriage. are planning on starting a small family next year. We have no debts and a six-figure net worth. But you're winning. You're winning. To which we are adding around $12,000 US per month. Wonderful. To give you an idea of our frugality, we spent a total of $2,000 on our wedding and our monthly living cost after rent is only around $1,000 US. We're financially conservative and save and invest around 8% of our income annually. So that's the context I'm coming from. You and I agree on many topics, but I'd like to request a video where you outline your thoughts on the following subject. Number one, your blanket dismissal of the humanities as subjects for university study. I fully agree with you that many cases a humanities degree is needed, is indeed worthless, but I think your dismissal is too categorical. I myself am a humanities graduate as a byproduct of a BA and MA degrees. I perfected my pre-existing skills in written communication and the art of verbal persuasion. You might dismiss that, but hey, it's standing, it's standing me in very good stead. I would not have clinched my current pre or previous jobs unless I'd done well in a degree of that sort. And just to give you some pertinent history, I didn't start university until I was 21, having pissed away my time between the ages of 17 and 21 doing odd jobs and traveling while I considered what to do with my life. Eventually, I decided to major in history, intending to become a European or EU diplomat. Ah. Then a lot of kids say, hey kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a diplomat for the European Union. Oh, all right. You just said cop or firefighter or something, you know. It's, it's good though, You're, you are aiming high. I worked my way through college as a security guard and graduated debt-free at the ripe old age of 25. By then, I lost my interest in becoming a diplomat. Found myself aimlessly pissing away a couple more years before finally realizing that I needed to quickly formulate a proper plan and strategy. I decided to borrow $20,000 to get a master's in communication. Now before you laugh, I knew there are plenty of jobs out there in this field because I'd done the research. Specifically, jobs existed in the area of technical communication, which I majored in. Well, okay, see, you, you, your STEM sneaks in. Uh, I'm not dismissing your, your, your um, communicative, uh, communicative, your communication skills or your, your writing skills or, or charisma or charm. Um, but in, in the end, you did have to get a technical community. I mean, there was, they don't just hire you because you're a nice guy. I mean, they, they, that's not, they, they, you have a skill you're offering. Needless to say, my plan paid off very handsomely. The qualification got me my first job and a higher than would be otherwise expected started salary. I cleared that 20,000 debt in 12 months and as mentioned, I am now saving five figures each month and blah, blah, blah. Not alone having done well out of the humanities, a female friend of mine majored in social geography. Her aim was to become an urban planner. Now she earns a very nice salary for herself in Canada. And by the way, she's also debt free. Well, I'll send her with one of my guys. Uh, so I'm wondering whether you agree that humanities degree is not always a disaster. It can work out very well in some cases, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, well, that's the thing. Right, I mean, and you can major in petroleum engineering and make jack shit. It, it, it is, what are you saying is true. Just because you get a humanities degree does not mean uh, you won't be successful. I mean, uh, Time Magazine came out with this lie as propaganda. Well, it's <laughs> I'm joking. But it was, see, the humanities aren't that bad. Here's, here's CEOs with humanities degrees. And they went through, like, you know, Disney and all the other big-time CEOs. So, no, it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to be successful. But what, what I'm talking about is you're special, okay? You're just unique. I'm sure if you did your IQ test, you, you know, you, you think outside of the box and you are certainly polished and refined with your, with your communication skills. 
but you also worked that in. I have a feeling that you have skills and intelligence and serve your employer better that you earn, you no doubt earn your $160,000. Not everyone is like that. And statistically speaking, you know, it's, it's like uh, the casinos. You got to look and say, all right, what are the statistical chances? You could win. You could. <clears throat> You're likely going to lose. And when you take the average kid nowadays who has been lied to their entire lives about how great they're going to be and it's the evil people keeping them down and if you just go to college, you got to go to college. They don't have either the capacity, the connections, or the mental facilities, or even the luck uh, that people who are successful with uh, humanities degrees have. And they are likely going to severely financially hurt themselves, cripple themselves in the mid to long term if they get a degree and it doesn't pay off. So I, and it's, and it's like, okay, what, right here, okay, my background, finance and economics, okay, rather math intensive. I ended up teaching dance class and becoming a writer. Well, but I'm not normal. We're not normal. And the average person, you know, if, if you want, go and, go and, you want to learn about the humanities, the average person should just go to the library, go online, take in documentaries, teach yourself, become, you know, read philosophy, read about history, um, take classes online at through Khan's Academy or whatever else have you, or MOOCs. But don't fork over $400 a credit and $500 for a book every fucking class you take. So it, it's the sad statistical world that we live in that for the best advice, the, the best statistical fact is that the humanities really are a bad move for most people. And, and if, if you're successful, you're lucky. Uh, not, not because of lack of skill, but like statistically speaking, you beat the casino. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you really, really want to, and you can pay for it yourself, you can major in whatever you want. But if you're typically, like a lot of my clients are, you're poor, you're, you're coming from behind the eight ball, you can't afford to waste 70 grand in four years of your life, you need to have something that pays off. And so even though you may not like being, say, an HVAC guy, you may not like being a welder, you may not like uh, chemistry, uh, <clears throat> it, you still owe it to yourself to go and pursue those things because... Most people's jobs suck. And you're right. Your life is a peach. <laughs> you are winning. Most people don't get that. Most people have jobs they hate. And what I'm saying is if you're going to have a job you hate, you might as well be getting highly paid for it. So have that. Now, number two, labeling, labeling oneself as a conservative. This is something I'd love you to talk about. You are fiscally conservative and believe in small government. I'm on board with that. Yet you're also socially permissive in terms of gay rights, etc. Also believe <clears throat> that gay rights ought to be an obvious thing. Of course, people should not be penalized for being gay or wanting to enter into gay marriage. I, and I suspect you too, am also in favor of legalizing prostitution and various other things, which social security uh, conservatives are generally against. I'm also avowedly secular. My question for you then is how are you comfortable aligning yourself with the Republican Party and conservatives in general when so many of them are so religious controlling in the case of the ridiculous evolution de debate, also anti-science. Would you not agree that you have some very strange and embarrassing bedfellows on the right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. It, it's the Libertarian Party does not have its act together, and I'm not going to go and help. I, I'm, I'm too tired. I think the, the country is, is gone down the toilet. So I could vote Libertarian. I could go help all the Libertarian Party and have them replace the Republicans. But the truth is the Republican Party has to be taken over by uh, libertarians if there's good the libertarian party on its own is not going to win it's just going to split the right-leaning conservative libertarian vote um so yes the, the other thing i was going to say is yeah there are some strange bedfellows and there are some people i completely disagree with but i think it's 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 your you have been duped by the media of sorts because the media likes to paint conservatives as these evil right-wing, you know, uh, humans were with the dinosaurs, and uh, we're dumber than shit, and Jesus will save you, otherwise you'll burn! They definitely do paint us like that, but I have not seen that many people. Now, there is an influence, a, a lot of rich, uh, religious-type people that I would disagree with. They do have, they pull some strings because of the money and the contributions they give to the Republican Party. But the vast majority of Republicans, I find, are actually libertarian. They are only Republican in name or how they vote because they're not going to throw their vote away voting on the Democrat Party they're, or the um, Libertarian Party. They're going to vote Republican because right now the biggest threat are your 
well, I would say financial, but now the left is even coming in and starting to get crazy with anti-free speech and getting people fired and Hulk Hogan and all that other crap. Um, it, it, very interesting. So I, you can make the argument. But in general, the more pressing issues, the, the more um, threatening issues right now in the country are our financial ones. And so most people will go and vote on the Republican Party because at least on that topic, they're correct. Of course, then you get George Bush Jr. This pisses away all the money. <laughs> I know, I know. They're, they're not much different. I understand the frustration with the Republican Party. But uh, that's why I would generally say I'm a, a conservative or a Republican, or I, I may say that now I'm a Republican. It's more because most, I generally am. It, and it also depends on um, the party you're in. Uh, not political party, but the group of people you have with you. If, if you don't want to sound like the idiot, like, I'm a libertarian. Oh, what's libertarianism? And you just want to go to a party and relax. It's, oh, what do you, uh, typically Republican. And it kind of, oh, yeah, they know, your average person knows what Republicans are. But to just avoid being Buzz Killington in a, um, in a party, I, I, I don't really, you know, if it's just like, nah, I'm a Republican, to answer simply for the average, you know, layman who doesn't know much about uh, politics. So yeah, I think I think if you, you talk to more Republicans, quote Republicans, you're not going to find them, you know, banging their Bibles and, and protesting against premarital sex and and you know, look out for. Well, they're not really anti-Jew. Who who gets out the anti? Yeah, it's more like white nationalists that do that. I always get a kick out of the anti-Jew thing. It's just hilarious. So anyway, uh, hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, keep keep kicking ass and and you know, don't have any shame that you got a, a humanities degree, but. Uh, it's working for you. I can't criticize you. You make way more than me. So <laughs> anyway, best of luck to you and your wife. I hope you guys have a good one and, and good luck with your family. Toodles.